Staying with major bank earnings, PNC and BlackRock out with their results. Julie, uh, I'm going to lock in real quickly ahead of this opening bell on Wall Street. You've seen the futures there rip higher uh, on BlackRock. Really, I think, showcasing all the volatility in the markets. Assets under management down 11%. You saw operating margins under a good deal of pressure. Not a great quarter from them. Yeah, not. Uh, we are seeing futures, though, indicate a higher open. They're reacting to the retail sales numbers that we got earlier. Um, so it looks like we're going to have a little bit of strength here on Friday. As I was reminding folks earlier, it is witching today. What does witching mean? It's the expiration of futures and options contracts. And you get some adjustments in the markets on days like this, potentially some volatility, potentially an uptick in volume. So that's something to watch as we head through the session. So you had retail sales in the plus column. You may not have BlackRock in the plus column, but just quickly to check on the other big banks that we heard from, because it's sort of showing a mixed picture now as we hear from the banks, the ensemble of the banks. We heard from uh, J.P. Morgan yesterday, of course. We're hearing from Wells Fargo and Citigroup today. Um, and... I guess, as we were talking about earlier, Citigroup seems to be navigating things a little better. But all of these guys are trading higher, which is interesting. Even Wells, which did miss estimates. Citigroup, though, the standout stock-wise as well, though, it's up by 6% today. So it feels like between the retail sales and these big bank earnings that things are looking up, even when you have something like a BlackRock that is not doing as well, or a Wells Fargo, for that matter, which is rising, mm -hmm. even though its numbers didn't look great. Yeah, I'd be hesitant to say not to maybe get fooled by some of these moves we're seeing in the bank stocks today. You know, I think this is more reflective of a bounce back in their broader markets, maybe that better than expected retail sales. You know, Citigroup did note that credit card spending in its latest quarter was up 18 percent. That was pretty good. Char uh, debit and credit spending was even pretty good, the likes of J.P. Morgan. But, but Julie, these were not good quarters from the banks. And I would just argue Citigroup was more expense-driven uh, than, than top mm. line. But still, uh, you're getting the sense now these big banks are now starting to feel the impact of the economic slowdown just at a time where the Fed is out there now aggressively raising rates. Well, you have two things going on with the banks, right? You have the economic slowdown on the one hand, and you have the market slowdown yep. on the other. And in the case of BlackRock, it's really the market slowdown that is more problematic for them being such a huge asset manager, the, the world's largest asset manager, of course. Um, profit there down 22%, revenue down uh, 6%, and people pulling their money from the bank, as we were talking about. So that's the problem on that end. PNC, by contrast, the earnings overall beat estimates for PNC, um, and yet those shares are showing some weakness here. So I guess revenue coming up a little bit short of estimates here. But um, it's interesting how the share action in these various banks is matching up or not to how the numbers look at first blush. Yeah, I'm just looking on our, our site right now. The second hottest ticker page goes to BlackRock. You normally don't see that on earnings day. Uh, I'm going to look a little more into that later. But Wells Fargo, you know, we talked briefly with Brian. Wells Fargo had a pretty good fourth quarter and a pretty good first quarter. This quarter is more, I would say, of, of old school Wells Fargo, which wasn't good. Uh, really a sense of a company struggling and now starting to feel the effects of an economic slowdown. Uh, and that what appeared to be a turnaround story, maybe right down the drain. Yeah, I mean, with, with uh, BlackRock, and I should be more specific, actually. I think I said outflows. Inflows slowed. It wasn't that the company had outright outflows. Um, I think BlackRock's profile has really risen um, among, you know, people who are not just finance geeks, for example. <laughs> I think Larry Finks, uh, the head of BlackRock, his profile has risen in part because the firm has gotten maybe more controversial like making both both political ends of the spectrum. The new meme stock. Upset. The new meme stock, BlackRock. Uh, well, I, well, I BlackRock, really the new meme stock, the, the friend of the message. I guess what I'm saying is BlackRock has really staked a claim and staked um, new business on a real focus on ESG, for example. Um, critics on the left would say it's not genuine, perhaps, so they're not really putting their money where their mouth is. Folks on the right would say, well, what, what is that? You shouldn't be focusing on that. So it's just, I don't know, it's been an interesting time for the firm.